This section is entirely about dilations. We'll just do an illustration here, then do some exercises from the book. So um, I'm going to start here with this triangle, ABC. I'm going to dilate it about this point, point P. Well, the first thing I might do is I'll draw rays from point P through each of those vertices, ABC. Because, in this case, the image would have to lie along those corresponding rays, each vertex, that is. Here I can see an enlargement, where, of course, the image is greater than the pre-image. And yes, I could go the other way. I could drag it down there, and I would have a reduction. So you're going to see those two terms. The other thing to consider, well, what happens, going back to this example, happens if I move P around? Of course, it will affect where my image goes. And I can have P on external. P could actually be on or one of the vertices. And this point could be interior to my pre-image. So look at those possibilities. The other thing you're going to see here is that we are going to use examples on the coordinate plane. Now the fact is this center of dilation, this point, could be anywhere on the coordinate plane, but when we are using scalar multiplication, we are going to work from the origin. And that's simplified, and that's about right for this course. So you'll see a lot of examples like that. Let's get to it. Well, let's start with a simple exercise, number four. Clearly, this figure is a reduction. And furthermore, I can see this distance is six. So the scale is going to be six fifteenths, just like that. We can simplify our scale factor is two-fifths. Now in this case, number five, clearly the image is bigger than the pre-image. We're going to call that an enlargement. Now this is a little different. We're given measurements of the figure itself. That takes us back to chapter six. Now I could define a proportion there. I'll take the corresponding side uh, of the image to the pre-image. I've got the 12 corresponding to the 8. So 12 to 8 means the scale factor is 3 to 2. If I want this missing side, I could do this two ways. I could solve it using a proportion. I could say x is to 15 as 8 is to 12. Or if I want to use that scale factor, be careful, you've got to use it a little differently here. I'm going to say 3 halves or one and a half times this number is 15. Therefore, that number must be 10. Well, now we're going to perform scalar multiplication on this polygon matrix. This is triangle DEF, the pre-image. I could graph this, or well, I could just, let's do the matrix operation first. Well, I notice this scalar, or this factor we refer to as K, is greater than one. So this is certainly an enlargement. It's dilating about the origin, simple. I'm just going to multiply the two times each of the elements in the pre-image and that corresponding element in the image matrix will appear. Three times two, six. Six times two, 12. Hmm. 10 and of course, Eight. So, just doubled all the blue numbers, got the red ones. Let's draw the picture, what we got here. That's the polygon matrix I started with, the pre-image. And then I could see, because it's an enlargement, I see, of course, the red is larger. That figure is larger than the blue. I can notice that every vertex in the red triangle is collinear with its corresponding vertex in the blue and the origin. Well, let's draw a picture of that. That's what I'm talking about. So I'll help you visualize. Right there, you can see point of convergence or the center of dilation is the origin.
Now let's perform another scalar multiplication on a polygon matrix and again a triangle, in this case GHJ. Well this time let's draw GHJ first. There's my pre-image right there. And now my K, that is my scalar, is, well, it's one half. And what I can see there, that's less than one. This is a reduction. So in other words, the image is going to be smaller than the pre-image. Pretty straightforward. So half of negative two, negative one. Half of negative four, negative two. Half of zero, okay, half of two. And half of six, half of negative two. Pretty easy. Now let's just plot all those points. And as you can see, this figure is a reduction. And exercise 20, let's perform one more of these matrix scalar multiplications. Here I've got two thirds as my multiplier, as before, the previous exercise. That will be a reduction. This time, however, I have a quadrilateral. And I can see my quadrilateral, and I'll just um, draw it right there. Interesting, because now the origin is on the interior. Let's see what that looks like. Well, the math is the same. And notice I've got, your author gave you all these multiples of three. Very easy um, arithmetic here. After all, two thirds of negative six is negative four. 2 thirds of 0, well that's easy, 2 thirds of negative 3, negative 2, 2 thirds of 3, and I've got 2 thirds of 3 again, oh another 0, 2 thirds of 3 yet again, oh this is easy stuff. So now let's just plot that, and you can see that's where my image will be. Well, here we go with the first of three composite transformations where one of the two is going to be a dilation. We're going to use this figure, and I'm going to show it right there, entirely in the third quadrant, triangle FGH. We're going to use that for each of these next three examples. So let's get to it. First thing is easy. We're going from section 9-2, this um, glide transformation here and I'm just going to slide it over. You know, so you, if I look at the X's, I'm going to add three to each of the X's, add one to each of the Y's, over to the right and up a little bit. So of course, it looks like this. You just slide it over there. That's from section 9-2. Now, here's what we really came to this chapter for, or this section. We're going to dilate. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to just, well, double everything for my F double prime, G double prime, and H double prime. My scale factor is 2, so F double prime is going to be 2, negative 2. 2, negative 6, negative 2, negative 6. Easy. And when I graph it, it shows up right there. There it is. And you can see that dilation, which we would call an enlargement. Well, here's another composite transformation. We're going to take our good friend, triangle FGH here, and we're first going to dilate it with a scale factor of one half. Well, let's just do it the easy way. I'll take the coordinates of FGH, and I'm just going to I'll multiply everything times a half. Negative one, negative one, negative one, negative two, negative two, negative two. It's that easy. Now, if I were to graph it, well, I guess it would be right there. I can see that animation going right there. Now, I'm going to take that triangle, the red one, and I'm going to reflect it across the y-axis. This is the y-axis. This is my rule. AB maps to the opposite of A comma B. That's from previous sections. So now let's, um, let's take this, and now all I'm going to do is take the same letters here, and I'm just going to say, well, let's make that negative one positive one. That negative one becomes positive, that negative two becomes positive two. And those are the coordinates for F double prime, G double prime, H double prime. 
and my triangle's right there, I could see it right there flipping over the y-axis. And finally, for our third composite using the same blue triangle, we're going to rotate about the origin 90 degrees, then dilate. So we're going from the third quadrant to the fourth. Now, the coordinate rule is right here. We went over this in section 9.3, and this is what we're going to get. I would call this an unfortunate example. It's not as clear to illustrate, but AB maps to the opposite of B, A. So I show it over here, and the red one, or the first image, is going to end up like that. Then I'm dilating by a scale factor of 3, so let's just multiply all these coordinates, or all the values here, by 3. It's that easy. And let me see where the figure would end up. It's over there. Well, this one's a little bit different. We'll end with number 28 here. For once, the center of dilation is not the origin, 0, 0. We can find it easily enough by drawing these two rays. We just needed to find this common intersection, the point 8, 1. That's the center of this dilation. Now, let's work forward. And I can see that if I'm going from here to A, I'm going three units. I have to go double that distance to get to A prime. Likewise, 1, 3 to go to B, I have to double that to go to B prime. So I have a scale factor of 2 to 1 with a dilation about the, well, about the point 8, 1.